Try again. I see that Graziano is here already. Hi, Graziano. Hi, Greg. Before Hi. starting, just confirm that you hear me well. Yeah, we hear you perfectly, Graziano. Okay, perfect. We hear you perfectly. And uh, yeah, as I said before, this is the final presentation of the day. Uh, and this is going to be about the pilot action that happened in Italy uh, with uh, our cooperation. So Italian-Polish cooperation. And uh, mm. Graziano will also have a couple of slides about uh, their other uh, pilot actions. Uh, so take it away, Graziano. Okay, is it full screen? Yeah. Okay. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Graziano Elegir and uh, I work at Innovab, uh, which is uh, an industrially oriented, uh, um, an industrially oriented uh, uh, multi sector research center located in Milano. Uh, we have uh, four different uh, technical divisions in our research center, and the one that participated to this project is the paper division. Paper division that actually uh, carried out also some uh, horizontal activity, not uh, only uh, specifically related only to paper, uh, and I'm referring particularly to the laboratory of biodegradability and compostability, uh, as well as the group that deals with the sustainability of uh, different materials. Okay, uh, the topic of uh, my presentation today, as Greg mentioned, it, uh, this presentation will be done by two hands uh, <clears throat> because we mostly cooperated also with uh, the, the Institute of Biopolymer and Chem Chemical Fibers of Warsaw. Uh, as uh, Greg mentioned, uh, uh, it will be mostly uh, the presentation regarding one of our case study. But before entering into the detail of, uh, <clears throat> of the uh, case study done with uh, one of the company, let me summarize briefly <clears throat> what we have done also with the other companies. <clears throat> uh, in Italy, we carried out uh, three pilot actions, uh, the, uh, I would say, uh, at uh, uh, increasing uh, complexity of the topics uh, that we deal with. Uh, the first one was uh, with the one uh, uh, small and medium enterprise. We just uh, supported them, informing uh, basically regarding what are the suitable certification scheme uh, for recyclability and compostability of their products. Their products were mostly uh, paper-based sacks, <clears throat> and they were developing also some uh, biocomposite uh, with, uh, with some bioplastic. <clears throat> The second uh, uh, pilot action was uh, <clears throat> about the recyclability evaluation of some <clears throat> innovative compostable packaging. And uh, this was done because this company was wanted to uh, evaluate whether or not this compostable packaging uh, was also suitable for uh, recyclability. This is a kind of uh, uh, tricky, uh, tricky, are uh, tricky topics because, uh, uh, as I will uh, uh, discuss better in my presentation tomorrow, not always uh, <clears throat> those products that are developed for uh, compostability are also very much uh, suitable for uh, <clears throat> for recyclability. The third one uh, is the one that we are discussing more in detail today, and uh, it regards uh, uh, a preliminary study of, of uh, life cycle uh, analysis of a new paper-based tray for fresh meat uh, <clears throat> application. So what we did in the beginning, uh, in the beginning, we approached this company. This company is uh, uh, Leak Packaging SPA, uh, which is a large uh, uh, Italian paper converter. Their main uh, uh, production is actually in uh, corrugated board and display uh, for sale and, and exposure. But in more recent years, they started developing a lot of uh, uh, packaging solutions suited for uh, direct food contact with, uh, with packaging. Uh, with, uh, with the food packaging. <clears throat> they use uh, uh, both recycled fiber and virgin fiber, and they started to get into uh, also the use of, uh, <clears throat> of bioplastic. Uh, EcoFood is the business is the business unit that is uh, specifically dedicated to food content application. 
And uh, all the eco food packaging solution developed by this company are based on uh, uh, <clears throat> this material that is called HT board, uh, which is a material made of uh, virgin fibers obtained from uh, certified uh, forest. And uh, <clears throat> uh, the properties of this material, uh, often in combination with uh, some amount of bioplastic, uh, uh, guarantee hygiene and food safety also for direct contact uh, application and uh, the general aim for the company is uh, try to replace conventional plastic products uh, uh, presently in the market with this new with this new material <clears throat> What we did in the beginning, we already knew this company because uh, actually we uh, helped them in the certification of compostability of their products. Uh, so we had already some contact with them. Uh, anyway, they, they apply for the, <clears throat> for the pilot action in, uh, in, within the biocomp within the biocompat project so we had some uh, preliminary meeting to present uh, our initiative uh, within uh, within the project we sent them the questionnaire which is the audit tool you have already uh, heard about in the general presentation and uh, we as a innovab we carried out uh, one preliminary visit to discuss uh, uh, what the company reported uh, within uh, within this questionnaire. <clears throat> Basically, what we did was uh, to evaluate the framework condition uh, uh, of the company regarding the knowledge of the biomaterial, regarding their knowledge uh, of uh, environmental certification and sustainability and we started discussing with them also what was uh, their vision regarding the ma their market strategy and how they <coughs> uh, they wanted to communicate uh, and advance in the field uh, uh, with the, with their product <coughs> So, based on this preliminary work that we have done here in Italy, we uh, proceeded then with the second field visit that was done in cooperation also with the Packaging Institute uh, uh, from Poland. And uh, during this second visit, uh, we had uh, uh, a deeper discussion with uh, more experts within the company. <clears throat> we discussed uh, specifically regarding the strategy, what was their approach in this growing market uh, uh, about uh, eco, uh, eco sustainable packaging. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> we basically found out that probably their weakest point was actually in environmental communication. So, in this context, uh, we recommended as a, a priority action to perform a, a, a preliminary study uh, regarding the life cycle assessment of uh, their products uh, uh, in order to uh, position the, the, the products uh, with respect to this market. <clears throat> and uh, we agree about uh, this case study implementation that was, uh, uh, in the end, uh, a comparison of of their innovative paper-based packaging with plastic packaging already present in the market. And uh, then we proceeded with uh, the performance of this case study that was done uh, in cooperation again with, uh, with the Packaging Research Institute in uh, Warsaw. In the beginning, it was a desk work from a remote between uh, ourselves and, uh, and the Packaging Institute. Then we also had a three day of a common work in Warsaw where we <clears throat> we uh, discussed deeply about uh, <clears throat> the day data provided by, uh, by the companies and uh, we drafted uh, uh, a report. <clears throat> this report was, done, was then uh, uh, discussed with the company. We gave them some uh, uh, feedback and we consolidated uh, the results. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, afterwards, we gave some final feedback to the company uh, via a web meeting because we were were already uh, in the in the COVID uh, time frame at that time. 
So this was the general uh, approach to the company. I will leave uh, then the floor to Greg to explain uh, the details of the life cycle assessment, uh, and uh, I will get back for the final conclusion. Floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Graziano. So yeah, uh, Graziano explained that we did an uh, LCA for the company. Uh, but before moving on to the actual results of the LCA, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with them, <laughs> uh, I just prepared like a free, uh, very simple slide that should explain uh, LCA better for you in like a simpler, more uh, popular scientific terms. <clears throat> so uh, life cycle assessment basically involves uh, building a scientific model that shows a full or maybe a selected stages of life cycle <laughs> of a certain object. This object can be a packaging, it can be um, a full product, it can be uh, like a part of production of this product, or we can even uh, do a life cycle assessment of a, of a whole company or even whole economies, if we mm -hmm. have the data, of course. So uh, what it involves? It involves uh, modeling um, a sort of mm -hmm. a biography uh, and family uh, tree of our product, as you can see in the <coughs> middle of, uh, of this model uh, shown here. Uh, we do it by considering every <clears throat> step that needs to be uh, taken for the product to live its life. So we look at all the processes that need to happen uh, and uh, all the different stages <clears throat> that are happening uh, from the moment when the uh, product uh, is just raw materials until the time when the product uh, <clears throat> actually becomes a waste. Mm. Uh, and uh, yeah, to help us with this, um, uh, so yeah, so once we have this uh, detailed biography mm -hmm. and fact tree of our product, so to say, so we know uh, what happens, we then have to document uh, mm -hmm. the input and outputs of all of those products. So we are looking at what we have taken from the environment uh, to mm -hmm. uh, achieve those certain stages. And also we are looking at what we are leaving behind in the form of emissions. Mm -hmm. Can be emissions to uh, to the atmosphere, the emissions to soil, emissions to water, uh, etc. Um, and um, mm, we therefore build this like a very detailed uh, inventory of uh, different inputs and outputs, <coughs> uh, and they take form of specific materials that we use, uh, compounds or even chemical elements. And uh, to actually help us with this uh, with this very complex process. Uh, we use databases, uh, and um, uh, those databases already include many of those inventory uh, items for inputs and outputs for like a very specific uh, like materials or even uh, full products. For this assessment, uh, we used uh, a simplified LCA, and uh, simplified mm -hmm. LCA means that uh, we are mainly using databases as our source material. Uh, normally, when you do an LCA, uh, you first base it on a, on a database, but uh, then you really need to do like a detailed measuring uh, in the company to see exactly what happens where. But uh, in order to do uh, like a simplified LCA, uh, just uh, using database as, as like <coughs> the main <coughs> of, your, uh, of, of your data is enough. Uh, so we did that uh, for, uh, <coughs> uh, for pilot action. Uh, <coughs> our LCA was done for, uh, for packaging. And packaging is actually a very interesting subject matter for LCA uh, because um, when we do an LCA of, of packaging, we can look and take into account like many uh, very interesting aspects uh, of packaging, such as, for example, uh, multi usability or recyclability or the eco design uh, or uh, the infrastructure or even the use phase of the packaging. And of course, how the packaging uh, is also disposed. Um, also, uh, very importantly, uh, life cycle assessment can be used as a comparative tool. So we can compare uh, two or three different products together and see uh, what are their uh, environmental strengths and weaknesses and uh, which one is better or worse from uh, the perspective of uh, different uh, environmental impacts. Uh, again, uh, packaging is like a very suitable subject matter for, uh, for, for LCA. Uh, because um, in order to use this um, this function of LCA uh, that allows us to compare different different products, um, uh, we need to do it properly. And uh, to do it properly, 
those products that we're comparing them, uh, uh, comparing together, uh, they need to be comparable in relation to function. So packaging, uh, again, here is, is, is very nice because uh, for uh, packaging, uh, the function is the same, to pack products. So we can, for example, compare glass bottles to plastic bottles or uh, paper bags to plastic bags. <coughs> Uh, or uh, biocomposites to traditional composite packaging, which is something that we did precisely here. Uh, so um, once we have this model built uh, out of this previous uh, slide mm -hmm. that I told you, where we are building like this detailed biography of our products, uh, we need to build uh, like um, uh, uh, building this model, and then we go to the next step of analysis. And that level of analysis is called the impact assessment. So uh, we are uh, taking into account the data from inputs and outputs that we collected. Uh, and then we use scientific basis and different scientific methods to assess uh, what is the impact of, uh, of the products that we assessed in this life cycle assessment on different environmental issues. And those environmental issues can be like, for example, global warming, energy utilization, water footprint resources use, pollution, ecotoxicity, etc. We have like many different methods that allow us to uh, look at different uh, different sets of environmental um, um, impact. Mm -hmm. um, and of course we do it for the all for for, for whole stages of um, uh, of the life cycle as indicated in this graph. So uh, for uh, this specific um, pilot action uh, we um, we used like a product from Big Packaging, uh, which was a, a paper tray, and we actually compared it to uh, two different products. Uh, really, uh, to be truthful, we compared four different packaging that has that has the same function, and that function was uh, the packaging of 300 grams of fresh meat. Uh, for um, the system boundary, we look at the whole life cycle, so we look at from cradle to grave. And that simply means that we look at from the point of uh, uh, collecting the raw resources to produce this packaging up to the point where this packaging becomes uh, becomes waste and it's either recycled, incinerated or whatever else uh, happens with it at the end of its life. Uh, mm, so uh, for the products, we've chosen one paper tray from big packaging, then another paper tray uh, which was like laminated together with with, uh, with or coated with PLA, so two <coughs> products from the company that we uh, cooperated with, and then we uh, also uh, took uh, two plastic uh, examples. So we took PET tray and polystyrene tray, um, and for the end of uh, uh, for the end of life, um, we made the following assumptions. So we uh, decided that uh, the paper and paper and, pay and PLA tray uh, is recyclable uh, because there's like a, uh, less than 5% of PLA uh, in the uh, paper PLA uh, tray. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, tray was considered uh, to be recyclable and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Graziano, you did some tests for recyclability of this. Yes, yeah. yes, we did. We did. So it was tested also in lab, uh, beside just looking at the percentage of a PLA. So it was actually recyclable. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so so we decided that this uh, paper PLA tray can be recyclable in, uh, in this traditional material sense. Mm -hmm. uh, for PET, we also considered recycling because this is like a widely recycled uh, material. But for uh, polystyrene, uh, we considered no recycling in here. Uh, and this is because um, while this material is in theory recyclable and you can recycle mm -hmm. polystyrene, in practice, it doesn't really happen. It's not economically feasible to do so. Uh, so uh, polystyrene is normally either incinerated or uh, mm -hmm. landfill, like for example, in Poland. Uh, also, what is important, the paper uh, trays were made from 100% uh, virgin fibers, which were certified by uh, FSC. Um, so yeah, so this, this is the setup, and right now for the results. So this is how the results of um, LCA look like. In here, um, let me just uh, draw you, like in here, we have a set of different uh, environmental impact. 
Um, and in here we have four different products. So we have the paper tray in, in green, the paper PLA tray, uh, tray in, uh, in blue, uh, in orange we have the PET tray, and in yellow we have the polystyrene tray. And basically the uh, relative height shows the, uh, um, the environmental impact on the specific category. <clears throat> Uh, so we can straight away notice that uh, the uh, two major categories that we have here is agricultural land occupation and fossil fuel depletion. And we can see that in agricultural land occupation, the highest uh, results are for the paper and paper PLA trays, which is very understandable because we have to uh, grow our trees and uh, uh, grow our corn for uh, PLA <coughs> to be able to produce it. Uh, however, um, when we look at the fossil depletion uh, graph, we can see that the categories here are reversed. Uh, and this is because, of course, for PT and polystyrene, we need to use, uh, we need to get uh, the fossil resources. So the major impact for plastic trays is in the fossil depletion uh, category. Mm. Uh, we can also simplify those graphs a little bit. So uh, we do it by compressing. Uh, different categories together and the, there we can mm -hmm. see more easily um, uh, and understand a little bit easier where are the main impacts uh, in those three categories which is damage to human health damage to ecosystems and mm -hmm. damage to resource availability and we can see here that it basically confirms what we uh, what we saw before uh, that we have uh, like uh, the major uh, impact of paper uh, and paper and PLA is in ecosystems, mm. uh, and uh, for the resources, it's, it's the plastics, and also for human health, it's uh, also the uh, two uh, two biggest mm. two biggest um, impact categories are uh, are here. Um, but then we have this slide, and this slide actually compresses the previous slide even further. And in here we have those mm. four slides uh, for those those four trays. Uh, positioned side by side uh, with uh, uh, like different damage categories of human health ecosystems and resources shown, shown like that. And this is where uh, we can uh, actually see um, uh, the comparison between uh, those four different products. And this is very interesting. I'm guessing you can see straight away that this is very interesting. Um, while uh, it's obvious that the PET tray has got like the biggest environmental impact <clears throat> out of all those of four, four trays, we see that the polystyrene and paper tray and paper and PLA tray have actually got a very comparable uh, result, as you can see by this dashed line, red line here. And this is even when uh, we actually didn't consider recycling for polystyrene and recycling was considered for, uh, for paper. Uh, why is that? Uh, you can ask, and the answer is actually pretty uh, pretty simple. So polystyrene trays are produced for uh, from um, expanding process. It's called like uh, the actual material is called expanded polystyrene, and this means that they are very light. Uh, we need much, much, much less material, mm -hmm. uh, much less polystyrene to produce a tray which has got like a similar functional unit to all the other tray, then we uh, need uh, PET mm. granulate or paper or PLA. So that means that uh, the results are so low because this material is very light. But does it mean that uh, polystyrene is therefore like the best uh, solution? Like from the perspective of uh, LCA, which is the environmental assessment of uh, uh, mm. Of, of products uh, and based of course on our assumptions uh, maybe we can say yes but there's more to this story of course and uh, while looking at sustainability we do not only assess environmental uh, impacts and uh, environmental issues we need to look at economic issues and also at the uh, social issues uh, so uh, the results are extremely interesting but this is not the whole story, and uh, I'm guessing that Graziano has more on this. <clears throat> Thank you, Greg, for showing uh, the detailed uh, results of the life cycle assessment. Uh, <clears throat> yesterday was actually mentioned that there are not very many 
at least independent uh, studies looking at uh, LCA of uh, biocomposite. Uh, we are aware of that, and this is actually one of the uh, interesting results of this pilot action because we started looking at uh, uh, the comparison between uh, a, a biocomposite and uh, some uh, plastic products that are already in the market. And uh, as uh, Greg mentioned, uh, the, uh, the polystyrene is a very light material. And that's the main reason why it came out as being still slightly uh, better in terms of uh, environmental impact uh, in comparison with paper. Nevertheless, uh, uh, the, the bigger problem with uh, expanded polystyrene is that it does not guarantee the circularity of the system. <clears throat> and uh, even in the best case, uh, I have recently um, read that, for example, in the United States, uh, uh, you know, the percentage of uh, polystyrene that is actually recycled is less than 1%. And I believe in Europe is pretty much, uh, is pretty much the same. Very often when we compare uh, life cycle assessment using a database, uh, we use uh, average plastic recycling, but that's not really uh, the case when you look at the, uh, a specific material because uh, there is a huge difference between polyethylene, polypropylene, uh, even, P even uh, polyethylene terephthalate uh, uh, in comparison, for example, with the polystyrene. So uh, uh, I think it's important, uh, you know, to do a fair comparison and uh, this is, was a first uh, uh, attempt uh, for us to compare a biocomposite with uh, uh, b based on paper with uh, <clears throat> uh, with the plastic that are in the market besides of course uh, uh, polystyrene uh, risk of being uh, totally prohibited uh, uh, as a consequence of single use plastic uh, this is definitely true uh, probably for uh, polystyrene whereas uh, uh, we still do hope that will not be true for uh, biocomposite and uh, uh, we hope to be able to uh, show that some of the biocomposite if they are properly designed they can be recycled and in the paper stream or uh, occasionally also in composting plants uh, but uh, you know it's uh, uh, it's not always the case that these products uh, are uh, are devils let's say the the, the multi-material it really depends on uh, on the design so getting to the point of this paper-based trail, uh, we notice as, uh, that the addition of uh, PLA from one side increases functionality and from the other side uh, it shows only a slight increase of environmental impact. And this is good because it means that when, when we combine some material we can uh, actually achieve functionality and at the same time maintaining uh, a correct end of life of the products uh, and uh, and therefore the circularity of the fiber loop when you recycle the products in the, in in the paper industry uh, I actually did not mention it uh, specifically but the same products uh, it is also compostable so uh, for this paper-based tray we actually have two recycling options and uh, depending on the type of uh, application you know so uh, if it's uh, if it's an application like uh, uh, like the one that uh, that we showed in uh, this presentation with very greasy uh, you know food like uh, uh, fresh meat uh, this type of product could be recycled also uh, in composting plants uh Last but not least, uh, this product uh, is still uh, a new product uh, that can have uh, the possibility to be further improved uh, in comparison to other products uh, that are in the market, that have been in the market for a very long year. So in the in the end, we think that paper PLA tray may have a good potential to replace uh, some of these conventional plastic products on the market. Uh, but in order to uh, also to proceed to make some step further, we um, we gave some feedback to the company, some recommendation, 
And uh, one of it uh, is to perform a full LCA study because, as Greg mentioned, this was uh, a sort of simplified study based only on uh, uh, the data that we could find uh, in, uh, in the database. But on the other hand, taking into account the fact that, that this company uh, 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 holds uh, uh, forest certification. If we look at the primary data, probably we will be able to uh, show a reduction in uh, in uh, in the environmental uh, uh, in the environmental impact. Uh, besides, it's still possible to work. Uh, uh, looking at the reduction of the uh, of the total weight of the products uh, uh, keep in mind that the paper products was much heavier than uh, polystyrene and uh, even a smaller reduction would lead to a better environmental footprint and uh, this is possible this is possible to uh, looking at the different fiber stock or also looking at uh, uh, the use of some reinforcement additives last but not least again uh, it is probably possible to replace a part of the virgin fibers with the recycled fiber. This would definitely be the easiest way uh, to reduce uh, uh, the environmental impact uh, uh, of the products. Uh, nevertheless, uh, at least in Italy, we have uh, some legislation constraint on food packaging in direct contact with, uh, uh, with the greasy and wet food stuff. Recycled fiber are not allowed. This is not the same uh, in, uh, in different legislation, but in Italy we have a lot of constraint on uh, this issue. But the company could also look at the possibility to use PLA as a barrier to some contaminants uh, and, uh, and, and, and then uh, uh, find a way to uh, implement at least a part of uh, uh, recycled fiber within uh, the product. Okay, that was it. I hope we were clear enough about this LCA, which is not always easy to uh, explain, but we are open to the question. And uh, you could also, if you don't have a question now, you can contact me. You see here my email address. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Gratiano. Uh, so yeah, I, I open the floor to questions. If you have any questions, be sure to post them uh, in the chat and we will try to answer them as best as we can. No question, Greg. No questions, at least no not yet. <laughs> I'm still typing. So Too yeah, better. let's give okay, them we, one. Okay, we know that the, the matter is complicated and maybe takes some time to think about. <laughs> Uh, once more, uh, those presentations and the uh, uh, case studies uh, for uh, for the pilot actions as well, uh, uh, which will take form of a document, as I remember. So uh, they will be in the form of, of, of like a nice and concise document. They will all be uh, available later. Uh, oh, we have a question, I think. Look at that. Uh, yeah, the question from 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 uh, Professor Marek is: Are we planning to um, to publish those LCA results? <clears throat> well, uh, we got the permission from the company to publish what we have shown uh, in uh, this presentation. I think uh, these are the data that we could publish uh, at the moment. Uh, but we are going to get back to the company and see how they react on uh, on potential paper. Yeah, of course, like uh, they will be published like internally, uh, not really internally because you all have access to it, uh, but uh, uh, you will be able to uh, get those results through uh, the paper biopack uh, website, uh, which I will tell you more about tomorrow. Uh, but when it comes to uh, the actual publication in some kind of a research paper, I think it's a pretty pretty good idea to, to do it like that. <clears throat> okay, we have a question about which PLA grade was used in the project. Uh, which PLA grade? Yes, uh, I don't have this information, at least not... Uh, uh, we are not um, allowed to, to tell exactly about the material itself. Uh, uh, the company just uh, just allow us to, to present uh, uh, the general composition of the material. So it's PLA, but uh, I cannot disclose what kind of PLA it is. 
So yeah, let's wait like a couple of seconds for, yeah. So Wojciech uh, said, thank you. <laughs> Great. Okay, if we do not have any more questions, then I would like to close for the day. We still have tomorrow. Uh, and tomorrow is also going to be interesting because tomorrow we'll be talking more about uh, environmental issues, uh, something we started here now. Uh, Gratiano will also have like a very, uh, a very interesting presentation about let me just quickly snap and look at what is the actual title piatul's end of life issues for recyclability and compostability within the context of circular economy we'll have a very fascinating keynote from uh, professor marek kovalchuk and we'll have um, a presentation from me and andre uh, about the paper biopack uh, um, initiative um, something called within the project the transnational biocomposite uh, packaging center uh, and this is some, this is one of our main outputs of the product uh, of, of of this project or biocompact project and something that uh, you will be able to uh, join and interact with us even after this project is finished that was like the main idea so uh, we will discuss it tomorrow we start tomorrow at 10 o'clock uh, and uh, should finish at around uh, one o'clock uh, so thank you very much for your uh, uh, for your numerous participation today uh, I was like really positively surprised how many people we had yesterday and how many people we have today and I hope that it will be the same uh, tomorrow. Uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you very much uh, and have a good afternoon. Bye. -bye. Thank you all. Bye.